ever wondered how an old analog milliampere based Romanian built multimeter looks like on the inside? No? That means you're a normal person. Good for you. But for the curious folk out there, I'm going to take a look inside one of these beasts to see exactly how it works and how it was built. I found this thing years ago in a pile next to the university. And of course for a reason for them throwing it out was not that it was a 30 year old device, no 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 no. That doesn't make it obsolete. It was because apparently someone dropped it on the side. And it broke. You can still see there's a very nice crack here on the side, in the front glass. So let's see exactly what this machine is. First thing that pops out apart from the enormous size of the thing is the name. It's a Mavo 35 made by IM back in 1979. From what I could figure out, the name stands for multimeter for amps, volts, and ohms. And 35? Well, there was a Mavo 1 and a Mavo 2 before this. So I guess this is version 3.5. Version 3 probably didn't weigh enough. You might think I'm joking with the weight, but it says right here in the manual that this thing weighs about 2 kilograms. Now for a multimeter that was designed to be portable and used as a field measurement instrument, that's a lot. Maybe there was something wrong with people back then, or they were really strong. But what's clear is that this device was not made for paper pushers. This was made for real men. Now speaking of the manual, let's take a quick look at it and see what's inside. So we got some general specifications, the various ranges, precision classes, more ranges and precision classes, again some more ranges the approximate weight which is only about 2 kilograms, how the thing is built, how you should use it and exploit it apparently, you don't need instructions for that, a very nice schematic, it's not a very complicated device but yeah this is this can be quite useful if you have to fix it or something, how to measure gain with this device, some more things about the gain and precisions and so on. The precision of the ohm meter, and the final thing is the list of parts. And this is what the manual ends with. About 50 something parts are needed to build this device. Not a lot. Moving on, looking at the instrument itself, we see that it has multiple scales for the various measurements you want to do. Like for example we have the volts and amps scale and then we have the ohm scale. Now you will see that for the volts and amps there are three different scales. One going up to 10, one going to 50 and one going to 25. Each of these scales are used for the various ranges that are available on the instrument. Also there was a nice trick uh, done to ensure that you are doing a correct measurement. We have a mirror behind the needle and the idea is that when you are looking at the needle and you see the reflection behind it, so you see two lines, you are doing an incorrect measurement. Only when looking at a perpendicular angle do the two lines uh, overlap and you see the correct value on the multimeter. Moving to the bottom area, we see a familiar sight that is present even in modern day multimeters, the rotary knob. This is used to select whatever you want to measure. Although this is quite common today, uh, back then multimeters had multiple knobs since it was very difficult to make a single knob to have multiple tracks, but in this device somehow they pulled it off. But there is still a secondary knob used for tuning the ohmmeter. Depending on how full the battery is, this will be used to calibrate the full scale. Ok, finally let's look at the back. Pretty standard, 4 screws, one in each corner, and then we have this monstrous thing right here. Now the idea with this was that not everybody has a screwdriver, so you should be able to open this screw only using a co coin. But not just any coin will do. For example, these capitalist coins, these are no good. But instead, what you can use, and will work very fine with this instrument, is a 1979 5 lay coin. Period correct, of course. So let's see what's behind door number one. Come on. Guess I'll still still need that screwdriver after all. There we go. So here we can see the battery compartment. 
For this instrument we need two batteries, a large R20 1.5 volt battery and a 15 volt battery. Now if you can't find a 15 volt battery because nobody really makes them, you can make your own. This is exactly what I did in here. I took 10 1.5 volt clock batteries, taped them together, put them in a little box and fitted it right in. So this way I can do some measurements. But it's important to mention that these batteries are only needed for the ohm meter. When you're measuring volts or amps, you do not need any supply for the multimeter. So I'll put it back together and we can disassemble the device and see exactly what is inside. Okay, let's see what we have inside. Ah, it's not coming apart. It's quite difficult actually, I wonder why. Come on. Ah, perfect. Jeez. Screws fell out, of course they did. Let's see what is causing that blockage. Well, of course, it was the battery connection. Now, looking at the uh, instrument itself, we see that there is no PCB here. All the components are mounted on this terminal board. Apparently this is how they built things back then. And maybe it was easier, maybe it was more difficult, who knows. Now, what we can see in this device is that there are multiple resistors which are not really standard values. So, we have these wire wound uh, resistors. For these, you would just take out the length of wire proportional to the resistance you need, wire it up onto this frame and just solder it in. And there you have it, you would get your very precise resistor. Other things we can see is the current transformer. This is used to measure AC currents. Some diodes, these four diodes are actually the only diodes, only semiconductor devices inside this instrument. Two are used to rectify the AC signals and two are used as protection devices for the uh, milliamp meter. On the bottom side we see the multi-position uh, knob. We have two uh, switch rails on the upper side and then two more switch rails deep, deeper inside the instrument. Okay, let's see if we can take this thing apart a bit and see what's inside it. Now, finally, we can open up the multimeter. Let's see what's inside. And yes, the first thing that we notice are the short wires. Now here in the upper part, we see the trimming uh, potentiometers. These are used for calibration purposes. We see the wires inside which are nicely wound together. We see the rotary knob assembly. And we also see here a thermistor, this component right here. Now this is used to compensate the variation of the resistors with temperature. In the manual it says that this thing will work from zero to 40 degrees. So if it's winter or if it's summer, it won't work. Tough luck. If we look at, look at it from the other side, we will see this massive shunt resistor here and we have a better look at the AC transformer. And we have this rubber gasket. So the final thing to do is see how well it still works. Maybe I should have done this before taking it apart. Well, if something doesn't work, can't really bring the instrument. Or can I? This thing was built in a time when if something broke, you didn't just go out and buy the next version for double the price and half the features. It comes from an age when if something broke, you would go out and repair it. Your TV broke, you fix it. Your shoes are falling apart, you fix it. Car breaks down, <laughs> you would have been too poor to have a car. Okay, so let's put this thing back together and see how well it works. So, time to do some measurements. First thing that I will do is measure some voltages. And I got here my small Chinese uh, multimeter as reference and from a uh, power supply I got my 12.5 volts which I'm going to measure. So first thing to do is set the correct scales. The closest scale which I have to the 12.5 volts that, I'm, that I want to measure is the 25 scale. So I will be plugging now the voltage into the multimeter. And as we can see 
on the 25 volt scale, which is the bottom one, my needle is pointing just in the middle between 10 and 15, so 12.5 volts. Time to measure some amps, we have to redo the setup a bit. Let's see, so we're measuring 46, 460, 470 milliamps and on our multimeter on the 1 amp scale, so again we are looking on the 10 scales, we're between 4 and 5, so the multimeter is telling us somewhere between 470 and 480. So we are making quite a good measurement with this. And the last thing to do is to measure some resistors. Let's start with a small resistor, a green, blue, red, and if I remember correctly this is 4 point something or 5, I don't know, some kilo ohms. Let's see what the multimeter is telling us. First of all we need to calibrate the scales and we see we're out of range. So using the potentiometer we put it right at the edge. Okay, and now we can measure our resistor. It's a bit bigger than this. Change the scales. And we can see it's a 5 point something, almost 5.5 kilo ohm resistor. Not much more to say about this thing. It's simple and that's what makes it so robust. Even after so many years, this still sting works and is comparable in performance to modern day equipment. And that's not something that can be said about a lot of devices. Hope you got some useful information out of this video, leave your thoughts in the comments and see you next time. Bye bye!